Welcome back. So, uh, in the last lecture, we were talking about uh, uh, the different type of uh, scales, either it is in local magnitude scale and body wave magnitude on surface wave. Now, all had uh, some limitations. So, in 1966, as I was talking in the last lecture, Aki proposed a new scale, which was been uh, termed as seismic moment. Okay. So, uh, it was necessary uh, that uh, the entire uh, energy which has been radiated by the entire fault is been measured rather than uh, uh, measuring the point source. Okay. So, here uh, what they defined was that, that uh, if you take the definition of the seismic moment, then it has been given as m o and uh, uh, mu s and this is the slip amount of slip okay, where uh, you have uh, this is uh, uh, mu or uh, this one. Okay. So, this is you are having uh, mu, uh, which is the shear modulus of elasticity. Uh, for the crust, it is around 3.3 .3 into 10 raise to uh, power 11 dynes per centimeter square. And then uh, we have uh, the slip, that is the amount of slip, which is which occurs uh, during an earthquake along the fault plane. And then we have the, uh, the surface area. Okay. Surface area during an earthquake, how much area was been affected or ruptured? So, it, you have the L here and the depth of the, the fault plane you are having. Okay. So, this uh, uh, will give you the total uh, uh, amount what was like total amount of rupture, then the slip which has been taken. Okay. So, based on that M O has been calculated and that uh, helps in uh, uh, knowing the uh, moment magnitude. Okay. That was been proposed later. Uh, with more refined scale, which was been proposed by Kanamori and related to the seismic moment known as moment magnitude. So, the MW uh, is now the most uh, 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 used uh, scale and again there was an empirical relation which was been given. So, when you when you have the MW, you, you, you put in this given equation which will give you the M, uh, MO sorry, when the MO is been uh, uh, you know the MO, then you will get the MW. Okay. So, the moment magnitude MW is now used world by worldwide for measuring the moderate to large magnitude earthquake. So, the previous uh, uh, scales which we were talking about had some limitations to measure the large magnitude earthquakes as well as the earthquakes which are occurring at greater distance. Okay. But this scale which take into consideration the, the energy which has been radiated through entire uh, fault and the it, it also includes the, the rupture area and the depth at which uh, the, uh, 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 the earthquake has occurred. So, based on that you can uh, have the complete uh, uh, the magnitude which is termed as M W. Okay. And this is you, can, you should remember that this is the this is the most appropriate scale which has been used worldwide for measuring moderate as well as large magnitude earthquakes. Okay. So, uh, in short if you uh, if you what we, we look at is the magnitude is a measure of the size of an earthquake okay. and if now this is important. Okay. Now, if the magnitude increases by 1, okay, so you cannot just say that okay, it may be the magnitude of 3 or 4 or you can say 7 or 8. Okay. It's a hell of difference between 7 and 8 magnitude okay, or even 7 and 7.5 magnitude or 8 to 8.5 magnitude. So, so if uh, the magnitude increases by 1, then the energy is about 30 to, so 30 to 31 times larger. Okay. So, for example, if uh, the there is an increase by 2, then the, the energy it is about 9, 9,900 uh, times. Okay which is more uh, released more in the next uh, uh, scale okay like you are having for example here it has been given so it is an it is with the factor of almost like 31 so next magnitude earthquake will be you you multiply by the factor of 31 though, so that that will increase so for example so hiroshima atomic bomb had and uh, 
earthquake which can like uh, the, more the energy amount of energy which was been released during that time was equivalent to magnitude 5.5 okay so the seismic energy okay both uh, the magnitude and the seismic moment are related to the amount of energy that has been radiated by an earthquake okay so the richter working with uh, gutenberg so the, this uh, uh, they give uh, gave a relationship which helped uh, in uh, in measuring the energy also okay so if you if you if you know the uh, the magnitude okay and you want to understand or to know that how much energy was been released during an particular during particular earthquake then you can use this empirical relations which has been given so log e or where the uh, where this this two are constant and this is on magnitude here okay so 11.8 plus uh, 1.5 m so if you have the magnitude uh, say 3 then you will be you will know that how much amount of energy has been released okay and similarly uh, you can do one exercise which where you can have the uh, the magnitude 8 so you can look at that how much is the mag energy released and then you 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 should uh, say that okay fine in you know, at magnitude 3 how much will be the energy released and how many three magnitude earthquake will be required to compensate that eight magnitude earthquake okay so likewise uh, few uh, uh, group of people they say that okay fine there are continuously small magnitude earthquakes or moderate magnitude earthquakes which are occurring in himalaya or maybe in the seismically active regions that means that the energy is continuously been released okay but if you compare that amount of energy which is released uh, during an 8 magnitude earthquake uh, with the th with 3 you will understand that how many 8 uh, 3 magnitude earthquakes will be required okay number of earthquakes you will require to compensate the energy of 8 magnitude okay so it will be you can you can do that and try to understand that what exactly uh, is the difference between the 8 magnitude earthquake and the 3 magnitude uh, events okay so this is a uh, chart which has been given okay which talks about that how much uh, uh, what is the magnitude and the amount of energy released uh, during a particular earthquake okay so if you compare this one uh, the uh, the two, 2000 okay this is the 2001 uh, earthquake which occurred 7.6 so this was the energy which was been released okay and you have much much larger energy which was been released here okay during 1960 earthquake so this alaskan was the second largest but now uh, if you if you if you say this is this uh, this is now this was 9.5 and the alaskan was uh, around 9.1 uh, uh, or so okay but then uh, if we believe that the 2004 was 9.3 then the this is andaman sumatra uh, uh, earthquake then this becomes the second largest here okay so this was 2001 Bhuj earthquake so this part i end here and then we'll start with the new one uh, where we will be starting uh, start talking about the uh, the geological structures okay so i'll start with that so this is another uh, very important aspect of uh, uh, the geosciences which we all should know and uh, if we are doing the mistakes and ignoring uh, this part uh, we are going to uh, invite we are, we are, will be inviting more of disaster okay. so this is what we call the structural geology so basics of structural geology what is structural geology is a branch of geology or earth science where geological structures okay which are basically seen or found in rocks or within the sediment succession okay are studied to understand their origin their occurrence and the time frame and causes how they were formed where they were formed and where they occur okay so this is uh, uh, what we call the the branch of uh, geology or earth sciences known as structural geology okay. now uh, this is uh, very much important where we need to talk about the attitudes of the rocks okay so each rock or the sedi sediment succession will have 
some attitudes. Okay. What are these attitudes? As mainly we deal with is that uh, that when the rocks are tilted okay, or folded, when the rocks are tilted or folded, then we will be uh, seeing this uh, attitudes which are developed in the uh, rocks. So, mainly it is related with the uh, in which direction they are oriented, how much they are tilted, what is the amount of tilt, in which direction they are tilted, those are termed as the attitude. Okay. So, rock masses or the layered or stratified when subjected to tectonic forces, okay, that is what we were talking about the plate tectonics or the deformation, they will either tilt or will get folded. Okay. So, so, either you will see that they are tilted. So, you are having basically all sediments will be developed or deposited in horizontal uh, fashion. Okay. So, when uh, this uh, are been subjected to deformation by the tectonic forces, either they will be tilted or they will be folded. Okay. So, when you say that they are tilted, so they have uh, uh, the direction in which they are folded or the tilted, again they have the amount of uh, uh, that is the angle at which they are tilted, that is all, all information we will will talk in the in this chap, uh, this uh, lecture. Okay. So, uh, that this tilting or inclination results into two important structural elements and these are what we call the attitudes okay, of the beds or attitudes of the stratus. So, with this will be with respect to horizontal we are talking we will be talking about. So, we will be talking about with respect to the horizontal plane okay. and they are termed as strike and dip. So, what is strike what is dip we will we'll see in the next slides. Okay. So, strike. So, let us imagine a hut okay, at the top of the hut and we are having here uh, the, the two uh, this is the uh, the uh, the line which is like what we call the hinge line and then we are having the two sides of the the roof which are tilted okay and they are tilted in different directions so one is tilted in this direction another one is tilted in this direction so they have some slope okay and that is an angle which we will will be talking about so the strike what we we call is an imaginary line on the surface that marks the direction of intersection of the bedding plane with an horizontal plane. So, you are having the, the horizontal plane. So, suppose we are having an horizontal plane here okay, and or, or you can say that okay, fine we have uh, some beds which are tilted. Okay. So, inclined uh, beds are there and then we are having. So, beds are tilted like this and then we have the, the horizontal plane. Okay. So, this is this line will you will be our strike actually or with with my well, this thing my hands will I can show. Suppose, the beds are tilted like this, these are the horizontal one, these are tilted and the with respect to the horizontal line, the intersection of this plane, horizontal plane and the inclined one is your strike. So, this direction is your strike direction. Okay. So, here it has been explained if you carefully look at okay, you can see so, this is the intersection of the inclined plane and the horizontal plane. So, this line which has been imaginary line we have to be consider is your strike direction and then perpendicular exactly perpendicular to that is your dip direction. Okay. So, this is your dip direction here. So, if you if you look at this one, so this is your strike, okay, this is your inclined plane. So, this is your strike and this my thumb here okay, is your dip direction okay. and the this angle is your amount of dip that is an amount of uh, that is an uh, that how how much is the inclination of your beds okay. either it is shallowly tilted or they are almost vertically tilted. Okay. So, this is this is extremely important when we are putting any structure or the civil structure in the area which are affected by the tectonic moments okay. and in in nature you will find most of the places they are they are having inclined beds. Okay. Now, the second figure if you look at we have the beds which are inclined here okay. and and with respect to what we have discussed in the, the and in this slide here this this uh, figure here this is your uh, imaginary 
uh, line which has been uh, at the contact of the inclined plane and the horizontal plane. So, that will be your strike direction and the exactly perpendicular to this okay, you are having this is your depth direction. Okay. So, so, this is an imaginary line here plane here. Okay, then now, we will look at the depth okay. again is an imaginary line constructed down slope on a bed plane bedding plane that marks the direction of inclination. Okay. Now, the depth direction is always taken perpendicular to the strike which is termed as true depth and is usually expressed in bearing and an angle of tilt okay. that is the amount of depth. So, it is expressed as like for example, 25 degrees southeast. So, 25 degree is your, so this 25 degree is your amount of depth. Okay. So, if you are having this, so this is your amount of depth 25 degrees and this what you are putting the next is your direction okay either it is southeast or southwest so you you will when you will put uh, this information on the map you will write 25 degree southwest or whatever it is if it is southeast you can write that okay so it has been expressed in that way okay whereas the uh, the uh, the strike you will straight away you can say either uh, the strike is either north uh, 25 degrees okay east so with respect to north you will be talking in terms of the the strike okay so in the uh, horizontal uh, plane you are talking that what is the direction of your uh, beds and all that okay in which direction they are striking okay so unless and until if you are having horizontal beds then no uh, um, no strike will you can it is difficult to measure the strike and all that okay so this is what uh, is been shown here so if you are having the outcrop suppose uh, which is exposed which shows the the inclination okay so you having the inclined beds here okay so these are the inclined beds which has been seen on the surface you are having this exposure here okay and so you know that this is the direction of your inclination okay so this will be your strike so this will be your strike direction okay and then this will be then and the angle which you will measure with respect to the horizontal okay, that will be your amount of depth. Now, here this is an example from, uh, from Himalayas where the beds are dipping away from the, the screen. Okay. Again here, so if you just come across such type of beds, so you can see that the beds are dipping like these are the, the bedding planes here. So, this will be your this will be your strike okay. strike will be to away uh, from us and then inclination will be in this direction. Okay. So, this is your dip direction. So, you can say that this is your strike direction. So, true dip and apron dip this is again in nature it is difficult or if when we are moving uh, and uh, in the field and trying to measure uh, the dip you may not always come across the uh, that you are you are measuring the true depth okay you end up measuring the apparent dips most of the time okay so one exercise we will do uh, where you will be given uh, uh, the true depths of, or sorry the apparent depths and based on the apparent depths you will calculate the true depth okay so true depth is the depth of a bed a beds which are measured right angle to the strike okay this is what the true depth is okay and the dip angle measured in any other direction okay, with respect to the strike okay, other than the true dip are all termed as the apparent dips. Okay. So, if you are having for example, it has been given here or maybe you can say that fine this is your strike. So, if you are and uh, this is your plane here, so the, the horizontal plane. So, if you are measuring maybe I am not good right now, but I can try again. So, suppose uh, you have uh, the inclined plane like this, okay. so which are dipping in this direction. So, if you are measuring this is your strike here, this is your strike 
and if you are measuring exactly perpendicular, the uh, then there is no problem, but, but if you are measuring in this direction or in this direction, then you are coming up with the apparent depth here. Uh, this will be your true depth, uh, this will be your apparent depth here and this is what you are having is the strike. And one more thing which is important you should remember is the apparent depth is always less than the true depth. Okay. So, this you should remember that the apparent depth is always less than the true depth. So, this is shown here. So, if you are having the inclined bed like this, uh, so this is your strike and then this uh, if you measure is your true depth, but if you measure in any other angle with respect to the strike, okay, then you are measuring the apparent depth. Okay. So, this will be your apparent depth, this is your true depth, okay, this is apparent depth and this is your strike. And we have what we discussed was the apparent depth is less than the true depth. Okay. So, this you should remember this part, this one. Okay that is the apparent depth is less than the true depth. So, this is again the same uh, to explain the same part. Okay. So, you are having A A dash. Okay. So, you are having this A A dash is your strike direction which is equivalent to here the same okay. and then we are having B B dash okay, is this one which is the true dip and C C dash. Okay. We are having C C dash okay. and then you are having uh, the D D dash. Okay. So, if you are having this, these are all apparent dips. Okay. So, further another example which has been shown here. So, you are having the inclined butts here. This is your strike and if you are measuring the, uh, the amount of dip along this A, then you are measuring the true depth. Okay. But if you are measuring here along this angle, okay, along this one, the B, then you are measuring the apparent depth. Now, this is another important part, which is you can use a very simple trigonometry and if you, if you know the inclination of the bed that is an angle of the bed, then you can easily calculate the depth at which at particular point. Suppose you want to know the depth uh, of this bed that is A at this point okay, or the blue bed at this particular point and you know the angle. Okay. So, you can easily uh, make out that because you know the, uh, the angle and all that. Okay. So, within simple trigonometric relationship, you can calculate the D which is equal to A B 10 theta or 10 alpha okay. and this will be the thickness of the bed that is calculated perpendicular to the bedding planes. These are the bedding planes here we are having. So, you can do a lot if you if you know the attitudes of the rocks. So, one is the strike, then another is the amount of dip and the dip direction. So, if you know uh, all this, then you can make out and you can uh, like uh, a lot of information of the, uh, the, at the what depth the uh, you will encounter the bed and what will be the thickness of the bed and all that. Now, uh, as I told that uh, in nature, we will not come across exactly at what uh, uh, like uh, what is the, the angle which we are measuring either it is uh, 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 apparent depth we are looking at or we are looking at the, the true depth okay. or we are, uh, we are uh, looking at uh, the face which is slightly inclined with respect to the strike or it is exactly perpendicular to the strike. Okay. So, this is one example which has been given here. So, if you are having exactly like uh, this face then the 
uh, the apron depth okay, here in this one will be almost equal to the true depth, because you are measuring it perpendicular. Okay. Whereas, if you are having slightly inclined face uh, of the inclined beds okay, with respect to the slide, then here the apparent depth is greater than or sorry less than the true depth here. Okay. And at this location, what you will find is the apparent depth okay, is almost 0, because it is horizontal. Okay. So, you, you can do this experiment or maybe you can have the inclined beds and try to cut. Okay. So, if you are having very much parallel to the strike, then you will not be able to see any amount of depth, though the beds are inclined. Okay. So, what in short is the importance here, that when you are doing the survey and trying to note down whether it is an uh, the, the true depth uh, you are measuring or you are measuring the apparent depth, you, you should look at more exposed faces of the exposure and have as much as readings you can okay, to uh, nullify whether uh, you, are, you were looking at any uh, uh, horizontal beds or you, are, you were actually looking at the uh, inclined beds. Okay. So, it depends on what face you are looking in the field, uh, which is extremely important in talking about the attitudes of the beds. Okay. This is the symbol which has been used. Which uh, will you will find in most of the geological uh, maps, which only uh, show the, uh, the the one bigger horizontal line, and then you are having exactly perpendicular to the smaller one. Okay, so this one is your strike direction, and this one is your dip direction. Okay, so considering that the beds are dipping, uh, and we are looking at the true dip. Okay, now suppose there are two lines. These are the plan view which has been given here which are representing, uh, these two lines is representing the, the bed subsurface. So, you have uh, north here and then you have, uh, uh, this is the dip, uh, the strike of the, the bed here and then you are showing the dip here. Okay. Whereas, this one is having slightly different direction. Okay. So, if you look with respect to north, north, then this is almost north, north east, south, south west we are having. Okay. So, we have, so this bed is having the strike north south and we are having 20 degrees north east. Okay. So, the inclination is now in 20 degrees north east. Then another one is having a north 30 degree east, because there is slight angle between this one. Okay. So, this is the, if you, if you take north here, this if this is north, there is slight angle which has been seen here. So, this is you are having the north 30 degree east, it has been uh, uh, the strike is different here and then the amount is again 25 degree southwest. So, this is this is indicating the, the strike direction and this is what your amount of dip and this one is your the direction of dip. So, you can you can easily make out that this is what uh, are the two uh, beds which are inclined in different directions. Okay. So, if you are having like uh, vertical beds, then this is the, the way it will be represented on the map. So, it will have no dip direction. So, it is they are, they are almost vertical, but still they are having this strike. Okay. And this you are having horizontal beds. Okay. So, there is no strike, no, uh, no inclination has been seen. Okay. Now, another uh, aspect uh, uh, of, of the structural geology, which is again very important and in most of the regions, you will find this type of folded rocks. So, one we were talking about the attitudes that is the inclined beds and all that. Now, this one is we are talking about the folds, which are defined as a buckling of uh, buckling up in the rock strata of the earth crust. Okay. So, hopefully we can we can do what we can uh, that we will start this part uh, in the next lecture and we will try to finish the structural geology part in that. Thank you very much.